All right. Well, welcome everyone to UC Living Fit Forever's um, September Lunch and Learn. This is all about our holiday fat loss health coaching opportunity. Becca will tell you all about it. And um, there will be opportunity for a few questions at the end. And of course, if you have any questions for me or anything you're not comfortable talking about aloud, you can always send a message to hs-uclivingfitforever at ucdavis.edu. And I will put that in the conversational chat here momentarily. Um, I would like to introduce you to Becca Senek, and she's going to take it away from here. Hey, everyone. I uh, hope everyone's having a good day today. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and try and share my screen here. All right, if anybody cannot see that, go ahead and uh, leave a comment. Uh, I'm going to assume everybody can, so I'm just going to keep on going. Uh, so uh, welcome to today's Lunch and Learn about our uh, fat loss health coaching program. My name is Becca Senek. I'll be your presenter today. But before we hop into our main topic, I'd like to give you just a brief summary about myself, uh, give some context to this program. So I've been an athlete my entire life. I played softball and rugby in college. And like many of us who played sports in high school or college, I had no idea that I couldn't eat the same way I did before adulthood. <laughs> so fast forward 10 years and I was 50 pounds heavier than I was at the end of my senior year in college. Uh, and here's the thing, my career involved helping other people have the best quality of life as possible. I've worked uh, since college as a personal trainer, a nutrition coach, a health coach, and a recreation therapist, to name a few. So it was pretty difficult for me to swallow that I could help all of these people lose fat and reach their health goals while I was neglecting myself in the process. My career eventually led me to executive management where I'm now the deputy CEO of a company in Roseville, but with a busier and more stressful schedule like I now have and like most of you have, uh, it was even more imperative for me to develop a system that worked. So I started to experiment with developing uh, an easy method that really anyone could follow to lose fat, especially busy people like you and me. And so was born my five-step fat loss process. Following this process, uh, I was able to lose 30 pounds in nine months. And the best news, I think, is that it's a universal process that will work for anyone. So I'm excited to be here with you today to teach you my five steps to fat loss and also talk to you about the fat loss health coaching program available to you. So uh, here's our agenda for today. Uh, for the next 30 minutes or so, we'll cover what is flexible dieting, uh, the health coaching program, my five steps to fat loss, and then we'll also go in depth in step number one. And we'll talk about how and when to sign up for this program and even offer a little surprise bonus to those of you who do sign up. So let's dive in. First things first, uh, simply put, flexible dieting allows you to eat the foods you love in moderation within your macronutrients. Macronutrients are the protein, carbohydrates, and fat that you eat. So with flexible dieting, and working with a health coach like me, we can determine a set amount of each macronutrient that you need in order to help you reach whatever goal you have. Essentially, you will track the foods you eat every day to ensure you stay within those set macronutrients. So as an example, over the weekend, I took a day trip with some family members to San Francisco. Out of the three of us, I'm the only one who tracks my food. So I knew ahead of time that most likely the food choices for the day were probably not going to fit well with my macros. I could have decided to just not track that day, which is sometimes okay, um, but I wanted to stick to my plan. So I tried to plan ahead as much as I could. So I'll get into how to plan in a little bit, but for now, what I want to tell you is that what I did in the morning, um, I ate two eggs and a protein shake in an attempt to have a lot of protein, knowing that I would probably have a lot more fat and carbs later that day, because most restaurants and fast food places have food with higher fat and or carbohydrates. 
So because I was strategic and I uh, implement flexible dieting, I was able to make it work. And at the same time, I continued to strive toward my fat loss goal. Now, because there is that flexibility with flexible dieting, it, it helps to create a positive and healthy relationship with food. So what I mean by that is this, with your typical restrictive diets for fat loss, usually you're prevented from eating particular foods and those foods are thought of as good or bad or right or wrong. And when we are feeling hungry or maybe some of us stress eat uh, and we choose those restricted foods to help us feel better for one reason or another, then after we often have a sense of regret or guilt. <clears throat> so, uh, over time, basically, this creates a negative relationship with yourself and with food. In flexible dieting, the idea is that you will work towards your health one, your health goal one day at a time and within a reasonable time frame. Going too fast, too soon, like in many restrictive diets, may get you closer to your goal more quickly. But oftentimes, that also leads to um, maintaining your goal for less time. We often see that mostly with rapid fat loss, uh, those diets that uh, those diets typically restrict carbohydrate intake. So with those diets, yes, you do lose weight rapidly, but pretty quickly your body either fights back because it's starving or carbohydrates are reincorporated back into the diet rapidly. And then the total calories consumed causes weight gain again. Thus, that cycle of weight loss and weight gain and loss and gain just continues. But with flexible dieting for fat loss, if consistently followed, it will result in a downward trend in weight. Now, there is one particular time of year that a lot of people struggle with. The weather gets chillier and cozier, football season starts, pumpkin pie smelling candles are everywhere, and the food is delicious. Uh, so the holidays are, are full of this and full of social events, um, which is part of what makes them so fun. And, you know, I get it. Focusing on friends and family uh, is tricky if you're stressed about sticking to your nutrition plan and you're constantly surrounded by tempting foods. Uh, so what do you do? Um, That leads me to number three, the holidays. Uh, so I'll go to the, the next slide. So uh, basically, um, well, let me say this. Flexible dieting during the holidays, in my opinion, there's no better time than to start flexible dieting than during this time because there's, there's this time of year everybody struggles with that. Um, they struggle with overeating. Um, you know, the, the social temptations with, with food, most social events involve food. So um, if you join the program, I'll be with you to send you helpful reminders as much as you need. I'll get to know you better. So I can also offer you individual tips for the holiday season. But in general, uh, here are some overarching behavioral tips to set yourself up for success. So the first one is um, define your success. So my suggestion is to head into the holiday season with a clear vision of what success looks like for you. This will give you kind of like a North star when you're making decisions about where, when, and if you'd like to indulge in food. Um, ask questions like, you know, ask yourself questions like, where are you in your journey? And how would you like to feel on January 1st when the hustle and bustle of the holiday season ends? Um, if you have a specific date that you need to be at a certain weight or you want to stay as dialed in as possible, then maybe you dial your attention to focusing on spending quality time with people outside of activities having to do with food. Or maybe your goal is to just maintain your weight during the holiday season um, and cut yourself some slack to allow for a few more cookies. Uh, that's cool, too. And there's no right or wrong answer. This definition of success that you define um, will ultimately allow you to clearly assess um, uh, if your actions during this time are bringing you closer or farther from, from your vision. Um, and then you can just tweak and, and change your behavior accordingly. Uh, the second one is to prioritize. So uh, literally grab a calendar, 
write down all of your engagements and commitments that you know of and prioritize them. So depending upon um, what your success looks like, what that definition for yourself looks like, um, and the level of flexibility that your definition of success allows, you can decide which holiday events are most important to you. So again, some questions to maybe ask yourself would be, um, what foods can you get at any time of the year? So think store-bought brownies at your office get together or, right? Uh, you can have those at any time. So that might help you prioritize that, that function. Another question might be, which foods are, are truly special and only come around during the holidays? So think of a relative, you know, pumpkin pie or, or you know, your good friend's uh, special sugar cookies or something. Um, if it's, you know, once, once a year around this time, then maybe you give yourself some flexibility to, to indulge in that. Uh, another question that you can ask to help prior prioritize is, uh, when will it be easiest to stay on track? So think uh, restaurant meals with menu options or potlucks that allow you to kind of pick and choose what you put on your plate. Uh, those help, help you have uh, a little bit more control than um, going in blind, basically. Uh, and then another question might be, when would you like to be more lenient with, with your eating, with your fat loss goals? Uh, these are probably occasions when those special foods uh, might be around. So uh, think like your, your, your biggest time frame that, that you allow yourself to uh, be lenient. So once, once you have your calendar and, and you have your dates laid out, decide where and when you want to indulge and when it makes the most sense to stick to the healthy, healthiest options possible for you. Um, so a third tip to get yourself through the holidays while trying to either maintain or, or lose fat is to optimize. So what I mean by that is um, in this program, consistency is key. And so consistency over time is really where the magic happens. So to ensure that a few more indulgent meals don't add up and slow down your journey to your goals, optimize the days when you don't have much going on. And on those days, really commit to making healthy choices that fuel your body and uh, hit your macros on those days. So for example, if you know you have a function on Friday and, and Saturday, well, those other days throughout the week, make sure you're really on par, optimize as much as you can. Um, create accountability. So this is part of what this health coaching program is. Uh, but you can also find accountability in a partner or a friend, um, uh, you know, a fellow coworker, uh, you name it. So it, enrolling others into what you're doing will let them hold you accountable when you're needing a little extra support to stick to your program. Um, and though it's difficult, uh, telling others about your goals will also make them your goals more real for you. And then uh, lastly, last tip here is, um, it's so important and, and often one that we, we forget, trust and be kind to yourself. So one thing that I really teach in my program is that no one is perfect. And it's really important to remember that balance and flexibility are necessary parts of any lifestyle habit that, that's going to stick long term. So remember that the hard work you've been putting into getting to know your body and what makes it, what makes it tick isn't going anywhere this holiday season, and it will always be there for you to come back to. Um, okay, so, so why is it critical for health coaching now? So I bet after about 18 months or so of being in the environment we're in, i.e. a pandemic, um, it's probably safe to say that each one of us has been impacted by COVID-19 either directly or indirectly. Even just the mere fact that some of us still don't have our, our normal routines back that we had prior to this pandemic can definitely be considered as having an impact on us. I think we can probably all agree that whether it's anxiety surrounding working from home or having to go, go into work uh, and interacting with people who may or may not have been exposed to the virus, or whether it's the stress of sending our kids back to school, or the psychological stress of not having our physical outlets, like being able to exercise like we did a year and a half ago, 
uh, or whether it's the pause we've had to put on our personal goals, because frankly, our energy has needed to be put towards surviving and helping others survive, whatever and, and however each of us has been impacted this year. Um, I think it's fair to say that there's a clear need to, to just stop, take a breath and rechannel our energy onto the health goals we want to achieve or just put energy towards trying to figure out what health goals we might have. And for some of us, we can see a clear connection between the environment we've been living in and the lack of energy and focus on our health goals. And for those of you who have been able to maintain your energy in working towards your health goals, or maybe you refocused back onto your health goals at some point over the last year and a half, uh, really great work. It, it doesn't really matter what category you fall into. Health coaching can provide you with the accountability, the encouragement, discovery, focus, or whatever you might be looking for, even if it's just a pat on the back each week. So having said all of that, uh, what is health coaching? So coaching is about a relationship between your coach and you, so me and you, to create a healthy life that you want. It holds you accountable to make changes, and action on your part is absolutely key. So I'm going to say that one more time. Action on your part is absolutely key. I can be here for you and we can have our, our sessions, um, but, but really ultimately it comes down to you. Um, and part of my job as your coach is to, to kind of guide you and, and nudge you a little bit as needed to, to keep you going. Um, I, I don't think that coaching necessarily shows you anything new. Uh, I think that usually we already know what we need to do, but uh, coaching can give you a different outlook. To, to see the world and yourself differently, especially during those times when we might need that other perspective. This program in particular, um, I want you to know it is confidential. It's non-judgmental. Um, it, it does raise awareness, self-awareness, um, and it's not advice or counseling or, or therapy in that way. Um, like I said, you know, my coaching philosophy is really that I think everybody needs some guidance or reminders and an accountability partner every once in a while. Um, again, I believe that you probably know what you want to accomplish for the most part and just really are seeking assistance to, to, to simply boost you in the direction you want to go in. So at the end of the day, uh, I'm here for you. And uh, whether you know it yet or not, you're, you're actually in the driver's seat and have the power to achieve the goals that you may have. So now is the time to sign up because uh, I can only take on 10 more people right now. We, we still have about 10 people or so going strong from the first group. Um, so if time permits, I might be able to take a third group later, but right now I'm not quite sure. So it's best if you jump on board now if, if you're interested. So let's get into the good stuff. Um, some of you might be in a place where you just don't know what to do anymore to hit your fat loss goals. Some of you may not even know where to start. Some of you might be doing great and you're just here to see if you learned something new. Um, whatever the case might be, I'm, I'm here to tell you some good news and some bad news. So I'll start with the bad. The bad news is there's no secret and there is not a one size fits all solution. So uh, though there is some basic science that works, it's still a game of trial and error because everyone is different. And to further complicate things, your body is going to change depending on your stress level, how much sleep you're getting, if you're exercising or not, your age, your gender, your hormones, any medical conditions you might have, and so on. So that's the bad news. The good news uh, is that I love the challenge that this brings. There is a solution out there that will work best for you, and I can find it, and so can you. The other good news is that I'm going to tell you the five steps that my private nutrition clients follow and also the, uh, the, the clients from our, our first round of this fat loss program. Uh, I also follow this process. So here are my five steps. Step number one, track your food for one week. Step two, identify and commit to your primary goal. Step number three, determine your macronutrients. Step number four, check in every week until your goal is met or every other week or every month, depending upon what we work out. Uh, step number five, maintain your progress and or repeat the steps. So today I'm going to explain step number one in depth for you 
In the health coaching program, though, we will explore the entire five-step process. All right. So the first thing that we need to do is talk about why we do the first step. Um, the first step is to track your food for one week. So tracking your food is by far the best way to get an accurate idea of what foods uh, you're eating, when you're eating them, and how much you're eating. Oftentimes, if we've not tracked our food before, or even if we have, like in my case, I've tracked for years and I'm a horrible estimator of the amount of food I'm eating. Uh, it is difficult to gauge precisely how much we're eating. And I find that people mostly fall into two categories, people who overeat and people who undereat. So this first week is not designed to make any changes to what you're doing. Um, it's specifically designed to paint a picture of what is actually happening. Now, some of us might be tempted to try to choose what we think are better food choices during this week, because if you have a health coach like me, you'll know that I'll ultimately be seeing what you're eating. But please, please remember, I'm not here to judge you in any way. In fact, I want to know what foods you typically select and also which macronutrient you tend to choose over the others. When we move to step two, which is identifying your macronutrient, the last thing, I think that's step number three, actually. Uh, the last thing that we want to do is, uh, for example, uh, choose a higher fat content macronutrient profile if you're currently naturally choosing foods that have a lower fat content. So I wanna set you up for success, not make rapid drastic changes. Um, and it's also helpful for me during that week to see what you're eating uh, if you're following a specific diet like keto or paleo or the zone or Weight Watchers, for example, so that I can get an idea of what you may have learned in the past. So the point is be as honest and consistent as possible during this first week. This is a step where I truly get to learn you right now, not the you that you think you should be. Uh, secondly, you're going to need to sign up for a free account with MyFitnessPal. There are other tracking programs out there, but this is the one that I prefer for my clients. Um, in one of my first emails that I send to you after you sign up, I'll give you my personal email address so that you can add me on MyFitnessPal. Uh, this is helpful for when you have questions about what you're eating, um, and it also helps me formulate a plan should you hit a, pl a plateau at some point. Um, there's also a paid version that allows you to set your macronutrients exactly, but this is not necessary for you uh, to do for me. So essentially, it's free for you. Uh, number three, um, buying a food scale or, or using the estimated portions uh, infographic that I'll uh, show on, I think, the next slide. Um, like I said, the best way to be precise in tracking your food is to weigh your food. Food scales are on the cheaper side these days. Um, if you choose to purchase a food scale, my suggestion is to buy one that is rechargeable, not one that you have to replace batteries for. I've had both. Um, and if I didn't have batteries on hand for the, the one that needed batteries, then I had moments where I freaked out because I couldn't track my food precisely. Um, so I purchased my rechargeable food scale on Amazon for less than $15. Um, now, having said that, I know that there's a chance that the thought of weighing your food for, for some of you is completely overwhelming and daunting. If you've never done it before, please know I completely understand, uh, but also know that thousands of people uh, weigh their food every single day, um, so it is doable. Uh, there are ways to work around this, like prepping your food once or twice per week, uh, choosing recurring foods that you eat throughout the week so you already know how much they weigh or at least pretty close to how much they weigh. Um, for me, I've weighed my food for so long that it's just a part of my daily routine and it doesn't take too much time out of my day to do. And once you get used to it, it's really quite simple and easy. Um, two benefits to, to using a food scale are, one, uh, the more accurate you are in the amount of food you are eating, the more it helps in determining when a change to your macronutrients is needed. And two, oftentimes food labels are inaccurate. So for example, uh, if the food label says 14 almonds is a serving size and they say 14 almonds weighs 14 grams and it has such and such amount of fat, 
if you actually weigh 14 almonds, they might weigh 18 grams one day. If you choose another 14 almonds another day, they might weigh 16 grams um, instead of the 14 grams that the label says. So this can significantly impact meeting, say, your fat macro for that day um, if you are just going by the label for, you know, five or 10 foods that you eat um, uh, because you're not using a, a food scale that, uh, that is more precise than the label is, is where I'm getting at with that. But if you're not a fan of, of weighing your food on the scale, um, there is an option of, of estimating portion sizes. Um, so if this is truly something you feel like you would rather do instead of weighing your food, uh, then we can work together to ensure you understand how to estimate your portions. And again, I'll show that uh, infographic on the, on the next slide. Um, the last part of this first step is to try to be consistent, as consistent as possible when you're tracking. Try not to miss a meal or a day of tracking. This week, this first week, should be used to start to establish a routine that works well for you. And that might take a few days to figure out. Uh, when I first started tracking my food, I would actually plan my days ahead of time to ensure I met my macros. So, for example, I'd lay in bed the night before and I'd input all of the foods and amounts of the foods that I was going to eat the next day. Um, and eventually, after doing this for a few weeks, I started to learn the composition of different foods. So after years, uh, I don't need to plan ahead anymore, um, unless I'm going to splurge. Uh, and, and this will likely be true for you, too. You'll also start to learn what macronutrients are in what foods, even if you haven't ever eaten that food before. Uh, but like I said, use this week, this first week, to play around with different routines that might work for you. Okay, so here's the uh, estimating portion sizes infographic. Um, it's from the company that I'm certified through, uh, Working Against Gravity. This is a, a great tool to use. Like I said, if, if you don't wanna buy a food scale or you don't want to weigh your food. Um, and the benefit is that your hands are a tool that you bring with you everywhere. Um, so even if you do choose to weigh your food, this guide is a great tool for when you go out to eat or if your food doesn't have a food label, for example. All right, on the screen now is a real example of my food log in MyFitnessPal from May when I did the first lunch and learn. At that time, my macronutrients were 145 grams of protein, 170 grams of carbohydrates, and 55 grams of fat. Now, remember how I said everybody's body is different? Well, uh, after I lost 30 pounds uh, in those nine months, I continued to eat in about a 200 calorie deficit. Now, this is not really a, a huge deficit, a huge deficit uh, which is a plus to flexible dieting. But what happened was I plateaued all of a sudden, like for three weeks. And then I started to get really, really hungry on some days. This was an indicator for me that I needed to make some changes because being really hungry probably meant I was not eating enough. After adding some carbohydrates and fat slowly over the course of about three weeks, I finally found my sweet spot again where I was no longer hungry and I started to slowly lose fat again. Sounds a bit backwards, right? Uh, but having said that, there can be other factors that cause hunger as, as well. So personally, I, I feel comfortable sharing with you that for personal reasons, um, I had to start taking uh, birth control in May. So this was my first time taking a birth control pill and I've recently stopped taking it because in terms of my fat loss journey, one side effect that I experienced while taking the pill was feeling extremely hungry. So at first I thought maybe I was doing too much exercise and needed more calories. So I added more calories for about three months. But when the hunger did not stop and my weight started to go back up, I figured it had something to do with the pill. So I'm telling you this because I wanna give you a real life example that this fat loss journey is a journey. Um, if we expect to see rapid results using a process designed to be slower in order to be more sustainable like this one, um, then all sorts of emotions could surface like impatience or frustration or self-doubt, et cetera. Um, but if we remember that this journey, sometimes a lifelong journey, 
is meant to bring us closer to knowing our bodies better. And if we remember that we are imperfect beings, then we can better keep our emotions in check during this fast fat loss process. And it helps us to engage in that kind of trial and error process. So our bodies are, are truly amazing machines. And once we figure out what works best for ourselves, it, it really is endless in terms of meeting the fat loss goals we have. It just takes some trial and error and some patience sometimes. Um, now I'm, I'm back to wanting to lose the 10 pounds I gained while on the pill, but I have to give my body what it needs in order to do so. And so do you. Um, so yeah, it's difficult sometimes, but remember a fat loss journey is, is not a rapid process. Think about how long it takes to gain weight. My guess is, um, you know, depending upon how much fat you might want to lose, maybe it took you, you know, six months or more to gain that, if not years and years. Um, so it's realistic that it'll probably take you a little while to lose that fat. And on average, in a healthy caloric deficit, an adult woman uh, typically loses about 0.6 pounds per week. And an adult man typically loses about 0.8 pounds per week. So I want to emphasize a healthy deficit because slow and steady wins this race long term. All right, so what exactly is uh, the um, UCLFF Fat Loss Health Coaching Program? Um, well, first, it's exclusively for you as employees. Uh, the program is set up uh, such that your first session will be a uh, 15 to 30 minute phone call or video call with me. And then thereafter, uh, you will send me a check-in on a weekly or bi-weekly basis via a shared Excel document in your uh, UC Davis OneDrive for the next three months. So we'll schedule a monthly call also um, with everyone for a group conversation and question and answer session um, to help you support each other and, and also normalize this process by hearing about each other's journeys. And that's it. Um, I'll of course send you more information about what your check-in includes and also some helpful resources to guide you along the way. Um, so to sign up, just email the email address displayed here. Uh, I don't have it memorized like Janelle does, but it's right there. Um, and make sure to use the subject line, fat loss health coach. Indicate your best contact information. Um, keeping in mind that I will probably contact you outside of regular business hours. Our first session will likely be outside of business hours as well. I can't emphasize enough uh, the importance of telling that voice inside your head to stop doubting yourself and to instead make the decision to sign up uh, today. Getting started is really the easiest part. And then after that, I'll be right by your side the entire time. Uh, don't wait too long to jump in uh, with both feet. Um, remember that, uh, you know, I, I have a max of, of taking 10 people this go around. Um, Last time I was able to start with quite a few more, um, but because it's been so successful, uh, I'm quite busy. Um, so do make the decision, do sign up today. Uh, the email address is also on the screen. Um, you're gonna need to decide if you want to use a food scale or if you want to estimate using your hand or maybe a combination. Um, go ahead and set up a MyFitnessPal account and go ahead and start tracking your food too. Even if you don't wanna join this program, I, I recommend um, tracking your food for a week just to kind of get an idea of, of what you're eating. Um, and don't wait too long. Uh, every day that you wait is one more day that, that you have to ultimately reverse. Um, don't doubt your ability to do this. Remember, thousands of people do this every single day. Uh, and, and don't hesitate to ask any questions at the end of this presentation or uh, via email. My guarantee to you, I don't say this lightly, is if you follow the five steps to fat loss, my five steps to fat loss, you will start making progress towards your fat loss goal in just a matter of a few weeks. So the first five people who sign up uh, have the opportunity to schedule your first session on Wednesday, this Wednesday. Um, just email the address listed here. Like I said, Janelle or I will respond back to you um to let you know basically if you were one of the first five to to, to give you a couple of option, options to meet on wednesday um 
And as an added incentive to be one of the first five to sign up, you will receive a surprise bonus item. Janelle's holding it up right now. Um, it is a, a lunch box. I think uh, it's on the next screen. Here. Let me... Also, um, everyone else who, who signs up, so, you know, the second five people who sign up uh, will be entered into, I think, a weekly drawing to receive that same uh, lunch box. All right, if it sounds like I'm emphasizing urgency with signing up, that's because I am. Uh, if you're pumped about jumping into this, remember, don't wait. The sooner you sign up, the sooner you and I can meet to get past step one and into step two. And then within a week of uh, working on step two, I'll give you your macronutrients, which is your third step. So then you're ready to tackle step four, which is the meat and potatoes of this program. No pun intended. Um, so all of that within two weeks. Um, if you're one of the lucky first five to sign up, we'll meet on Wednesday uh, after business hours. Uh, but if you're not, don't worry. I'll reach out to you as well the next couple of days to schedule a time that works best for you uh, to have your first session with me. Um, in the meantime, though, I've given you the knowledge you need to start step one. And the sooner you start step one, the farther along you'll be when we have our first session. So don't wait. There's already five people right. who have signed up, so don't wait if you're hey. interested to do so now. <laughs> Woo -woo. All right, so with all that, um, I just I want to open it up for, for any questions out there, if, if there are any. I'm going to rely on you, uh, Janelle. I can't see the screen. All right, make sure you write down that, down that email address if you haven't already, because I'm going to take away sharing my screen so I can see everybody. Okay. Oh, I see some comments. Didn't see those during the presentation. All right. There is no cost for the program as an employee. There's uh, no cost for question. any UC Living Fit Forever program. Mm -hmm. Please feel free to use the chat feature to ask any questions. I am opening up mics if anybody wants to say anything aloud. Um, you might notice that your mic is coming available so that you can do so. Just um, unmute yourself to ask a question aloud or please use the chat feature. Amy, I see your question. Uh, the answer is, yeah, I'll give you the actual breakdown of your macros. Yep. <clears throat> You're welcome. Any other questions? I know there's got to be some. And of course, if you have questions that you're not comfortable asking here, you can always send us an email and we will get right back to you. Hi, I have a quick question. This is Amy again. Um, so I remember doing something similar to this with Janelle a while back and we in our first meeting we took um, like all the starting numbers, weight, measurements, um, whatnot. Is it similar to that as well? So um, is that how you establish where you're at now and like what, like how many calories you should have and everything like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a series of, of questions um, that I'll send you via email about, you know, exercise history, uh, some a little bit of medical history, some preferences, uh, and then as part of your uh, check-in, um, for our first group, we did it every week, but I want to open it up for you to choose whether you want to do it once a week or every two weeks or every month. Mm -hmm. um, 
that is part of your check-in is uh, your weight on the scale and then uh, three measurements, um, your bust, your waist, and then your hips. Uh, and then also you can opt in to send me photos as well with your check-in. Um, some people aren't, aren't comfortable with that, but for me, it's, it's really helpful because uh, when we're in the thick of it and, and we're the ones who you know, are, are trying so hard to lose this weight, sometimes we don't see the differences in our photos, um, but I look for fat redistribution. Um, and can typically see it before uh, you yourself can see it. Um, and oftentimes uh, I like to send like your first photo and then your present photo back to you so you can compare. Um, so that's part of the, the check-in too, if, if you opt in for that. I also look for uh, um, uh, a reflection. Like I ask you a few questions to, to answer in your check-in um, to reflect on your week. So uh, what that helps is, um, it helps with the relationship that you have with food. So we're not gonna have a perfect week every week. In fact, rarely will we ever have a perfect week. So if your stress is high or maybe you didn't get much sleep or you know, maybe you didn't drink enough water or uh, who knows, you had a busy work week. Um, I use that also to gauge your progress uh, in your fat loss journey too. Sounds great, thank you. And will this all be tracked um, through that spreadsheet or is it actual like calls yeah. every week? Okay. The first call is a 30, up to a 30 minute call. Um, and then thereafter, it's just the spreadsheet. Uh, so you just go in and, and update that. Um, of course, if you have questions or whatnot, you can, you can email me. Sure. Uh, yeah, Nicole, what do you mean flexibility? Like, uh, um, it's up to you. Um, I, I noticed that checking in maybe once a week is a little bit um, taxing for some of us who have really busy schedules. Uh, and some of us can, um, yes, it's possible to do them every two weeks. Yeah, every other week. Um, uh, it depends on your schedule. You got to have some level of self-awareness though too. Like uh, for me, knowing myself, if I did a check-in every two weeks, I'd probably fall off the wagon. Uh, I wouldn't hold myself accountable. Um, so you really have to determine that. For some people, checking in once a month would be just fine. So I'm going to leave that up to you and we'll talk about that in our first session. Um, Stephanie, the, the program is a three-month program. So basically from your start date, so our first date of the, the session, um, three months out from there. All right, awesome. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to send an email to hs-ucLivingFitForever at ucdavis.edu, and we will get a hold of you either way. Thanks for being here, guys. Have a great day. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.